I want a tech job, but I lack the experience. What do you do? So I'm gonna show you three ways that you can gain the experience when you're afraid and you don't have the confidence to go in and apply for a job that you feel like you don't have real world experience in. So what about Amazon being an innovator, right? So most of these companies that's been around for 30, 40, 50 years, they're thinking, we've been profitable all these years, we've been doing something right, right? So when technology came out, when e-commerce came out, they refused to embrace the change, they refused to move with the times. So Amazon, they continued to march ahead and these companies that were stuck in their old ways, they never budged. So that caused them to fall into that trap of closing their doors. All right, so the future of tech jobs. So I give you an example. Right now, you can walk into McDonald's and not speak to one person and place your order from the comfort of a kiosk on the left-hand side once you walk into the door. You can go in, you can scroll up and down on the menu, you can select exactly what you want, and also check out right there from the comfort of a kiosk. Walk to your seat, and then your food will arrive. Views, and that's the thing that you wanna get. You wanna be able to gain the reviews and the stars, and here's an example. Say for instance, you can build a website for one of your parents or a friend and have your parent and friend sign up on one of these sites, give you a five-star rating. So that can actually start building up your momentum for your customer base. Do you need to learn how to type? Can anyone answer that for me? Yes. I mean, I do, because I'm a terrible typer. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely, so the answer is yes. You wanna learn how to type. So if you don't have a course here, you can actually go to YouTube and learn how to type for free. There are a ton of people on YouTube showing you how to type. And what I mean in terms of typing, imagine yourself doing a presentation at an organization and you're the person that's leading and guiding that presentation. If you are in front of a laptop or a computer, you want to be able to have your hands placed on the home row key or the home row keys. You want to be able to look around the room and talk to different people and answer different questions, you want to be able to multitask. And you don't want to do this. You don't want to be pecking one index finger at a time. You don't want to do that because that's going to be embarrassing for you. And if the meeting is time boxed for one hour, guess what? Now the meeting is going to go to an hour and a half, possibly two hours. So it's going to be very painful for the audience. You want to dress up during your phone interview because when you're interviewing, now you have the confidence that you need, right? Now your voice is gonna be projected. And the person that's interviewing you on the other end, they hear a smile. Are tech companies tattoo friendly, body piercing friendly, and unnatural hair color friendly? All of the companies I've talked to, they welcome all of these things in terms of style. The only thing that they ask is that if you have tattoos that could possibly be offensive to someone at school, then they want to make sure someone at school or work, they want to make sure that you are covering those up. And that's all they ask. Hi, um, so my name is Matt Buchanan. I'm one of the senior instructors at Technology Leadership High School. And we just got done with a presentation by Gil Davis about how to land a tech job. Um, and the presentation was definitely of import to the students as it helps them proceed toward their transitional work and getting into adulthood. Definitely had real world industry related applications and specific next steps for them to take in order to land that tech job that they're all attempting to move toward. Um, he talked about not only the specific things in terms of accreditations that they might be interested in, but also the overall kind of like holistic element of the mindsets and aptitudes and attitudes that student need, need to present in order to move on into that next chapter of their life and become um, you know, a contributing professional. Uh, the ability of the speaker to interact with the students was great, very responsive to questioning, um, definitely promoted inquiry within the discussion at the closure, and the materials were all totally age appropriate and ready for a professional atmosphere. I could see it taking place at a national laboratory or at a public high school. So it was definitely a benefit to our students who are both young adults and legal adults and also to us as staff members to direct the work that we do with them in the future. So I would definitely recommend um, Gil Davis as a motivational speaker in the future um, as he definitely has a way of reaching youth.
I would say because technology continues to evolve, there's going to be a market for technology in every aspect. Like right now, the contract that I'm on now, it's called space management. And I was thinking, so when they told me that I was going to get the job working with the space department, I started thinking NASA, things like that, right? But space department is basically a department that assigns space for you to sit in. <laughs> yeah. So we're actually using technology in order to assign that space. And I'll give you an example. There is a, uh, so there's an MGM Grand Studio uh, casino and hotel out on the outside of DC. Brand new from the ground up. The parking garage is really, really huge. Inside of that parking garage, instead of me as a customer driving around, driving around, driving around until I find a space, guess what? They have a digital screen that's dropped down from the ceiling. When you pull up to the screen, it will tell you to the right on this row, there are 11 parking spaces available. On the left-hand side, there are five parking spaces available. So that's one way that technology has been incorporated to assign the space for parking garage. So when I talked about the three uh, scenarios or options that you can take where you can actually be a freelancer, you can create your own tech startup or your own app, and then the other one is to join a boot camp. There are a lot of people that are joining boot camps and getting jobs like that because of the real world experience that you gain from a boot camp. So that was one of the main reasons that I came up with this idea to do this book and also to create the content for this because I've been in so many situations even for myself when I first started out. When I go and interview, I would never hear anything back and I always wanted to know what happened. And so when I had an opportunity to reach out to a recruiter or the hiring manager, their feedback was to me was that, guess what? You didn't have enough experience. We went with someone who had more experience. So the three options that I gave you, now you're able to create those opportunities for yourself. And yes, they will accept you if you can showcase the real working work that you did. So like if you're a web developer and you created it for your own company, you can showcase that to the customer. You can showcase that to a recruiter or a hiring manager, and they will love it. They will wow it. Absolutely.